It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Went to Sainsbury's, picked up their new range of beers in March, as of March 2023. And we got a Polly's. So, I see a pattern here. I'll tell you the pattern in a moment. This is Polly's Melting Rose India Pale Ale at 6% ABV. Brewed with Cascade, Citra, Mosaic and Sabro. Brewed in Mould, North Wales. Polly's, one of the, I would say, one of the leading UK craft brewers. I managed to dig out and remember to use my Polly's Brewco glass with this one. So let's get the beer out into a glass and see what we get, first and foremost. <clears throat> little bit of smoke on the can opening. Beer in the glass. Whoa, look at that, look at that. Looks good. Check the price. It was Polly's Mountain Rose, three pounds for the can for this one. One to two finger white head. Slow moving carbonation rolling up the side of the glass. It's a straw-ish coloured hazy looking beer. Uh, let's get the aroma on the beer then. That's a different level, isn't it? I've been I've been reviewing beers from Sainsbury's now. This new range of beers, I'm, I'm probably into my sixth to seventh bottle or can. And this is by far, by far the most interesting beer that I've had. In terms of IPA, I had a really good uh, coronation beer from Sainsbury's, which you all should go and buy. It's £2.50 a bottle, it's 7% ABV, and it's a really rich, malty, kind of old school, old ale of a, a, of a beer. And it's really worth buying if you're in Sainsbury's. It's, a, it's in a bottle, it's called Coronation Ale. But in terms of the, the paler stuff, in terms of the pale ales and the IPAs, even by just sticking my nose into this beer, this is, this is of a different quality. This is of a different level. You get those kind of layers of hops coming through. The hops that I mentioned on the can, you're getting, you're definitely getting those coming through. It's soft. They've treated the water. I can tell they've treated the water just by getting my nose into the beer. If a brewer treats the water from being very hard water to soft water, then the beer generally turns out to be very, very, very good. And you get this in the aroma. A little bit of tangerine, pineapple, grapefruit. Orange peel, fleshy blood orange. It smells really good, let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Oh, yeah. Stone the Crows. Stone the Crows. What a fabulous beer this is. Passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange peel, fleshy blood orange, absolutely terrific. They've treated the water. It's really soft, really lovely soft beer, soft watered beer. What the brewer likes to do, just to touch on this soft water, they, used, they, they like to use the lightest of malts. And the reason why they like to use the lightest of malts is because then the malt is not offering a massive amount of flavor. The malt is offering a little bit of waffle, a little bit of wafer like biscuit flavour and that's about it. It's all about the malt just extracting or, or, or the brewer extracting the sugar from the malt to be able to then create that wonderful alcohol 
adding the yeast and making the alcohol and, and that whole process. So you need the malt to be able to make that malt beer. So you need the malt. But if you use a, a light malt, then you're allowing the hops to shine by not offering a lot of malt flavour. Same with, same with hard water. Hard water is, if you think of Marston's, if you think of Marston's and Marston's pedigree, it's hard water. It's a little bit sulfury. It's a little bit farty. Um, it's called Burton water. And some brewers actually, it's called the Burtonization process. Some brewers will actually get their beers to smell and taste slightly sulfury and slightly farty because that's what they think people want to drink. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there's people out there that want to drink that kind of hard sulfury water, but not me, I'm not really a massive fan of it. But anyway, if you then change that water from being hard and sulfury to soft, then again, you're kind of neutralizing all of those, all of those kind of sulfurs and fattiness in the beer. And you're able then to make the hop shine. And this is the point. This is what it's all about. So you've, you've more or less, let's be honest here. We've more or less neutralized the flavor of the malt. You've neutralized the flavor of the water. All you've got yet left is yeast and they use American ale yeast, which is very kind of clean and, and, and not too estery. So all that's really left then with flavor is the hops. And that's the secret with these brewers. That's the secret is, is that they put the hops on a platform to shine. They've shined the lights down on the stage at the hops, not the malt, not the water, not the yeast, but the hops. And you can really taste those hops in the beer. Passion fruit, mango, grapefruit, orange peel, fleshy blood orange. It is absolutely delicious, delicious beer. But I want to talk about that pattern. I started off at the very beginning of the review talking about a pattern, didn't I? Let's see if this is any, if there's any sediment first and foremost in this beer. There is, look, look. There's little bits of sediment. Look, look, it's a can conditioned beer. Look at the sediment in the bottom of this can. This could make the beer even more tasty. It's even more soft and fluffy and really hoppy, really lovely and hoppy. Right, I want to talk about this pattern and then I'm going to rate the beer and then I'm going to go. Right, what I've seen over the years with brewers is brewers of fantastic reputation generally dip their toes in with supermarkets um, of great quality. So if you think of Thornbridge, Thornbridge tried their hand at putting beers in the supermarket with Waitrose, absolutely with Waitrose. And Jaipur used to be Jaipur as of the Jaipur of old. And the Kipling was the Kipling of old. It was terrific. You were, I was able to walk half a mile to my local Waitrose store and buy bottles of Jaipur. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. Brilliant beer, absolutely brilliant beer. And then, of course, they went into Morrison's and Tesco and as now, now, now dry beers everywhere and, and, and it's a very different beer. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to happen with Polly's. Um, I'm not going to say that with massive confidence. Um, well, but what I am going to say, though, is and I predicted this. I have predicted this. Um, there's a pattern appearing here. Um, Polly's first launched their beer. The first supermarket they chose to go into was Marks and Spencers. They put their beer in Marks and Spencers. Um, it was tasting great. And now they put their beer into Sainsbury's, which is a very... Sainsbury's is the... <coughs> it's almost like the, the wannabe Marks and Spencers. Sainsbury's has always been the wannabe Marks and Spencers. It's trying to be Marks and Spencers, but slightly lower in kind of maybe not quality but maybe in the minds of the public 
it's not Marks and Spencers. It wants to be Marks and Spencers, but it's not. So, of course, Polly's and, of course, Sainsbury's, certainly Sainsbury's, have seen that Polly's is in Marks and Spencers and they want some of that beer. So then they've approached probably Polly's and said, will you make a beer for us? So now all of a sudden, Polly's is in Marks and Spencers and Sainsbury's. What happens then is a company like Morrison's, who want to be a Sainsbury's wannabe, will come along and say, will you make a beer for us, which they have. Polly's is now in Morrison's at the same time, so they're in three supermarkets. And what happens is then they'll produce one for Asda and they'll produce probably one for Tesco. And then all of a sudden they're in all of the supermarkets and then they're a supermarket brewery. And I guarantee you, I hope it doesn't happen, but I can guarantee you in five years time, um, it'll be a little bit like Jaipur, where you wish you had the old Jaipur back. You wish you could go back to that time where you could go to Waitrose and buy the original tasting Jaipur that was fantastic and readily available. And, and you wish that you, you know, you didn't have to buy the Jaipur that is available now in Asda in Cannes, which is a shadow of its former self. What I'm saying here is that I hope, I've got my fingers crossed and I hope that Polly's can hang on. They can hang on to quality over quantity. That's the important thing here. Quality over quantity. Let's hope that they don't get too greedy, Polly's, and let's hope that they carry on making fantastic beer like this. This review was recorded, just in case you're watching in five years' time, in March 2023. So the beer in March 2023 in Sainsbury's was tasting just as good as it was in Marks and Spencer's and Morrison's. And originally, when Polly's just used to send, send their beer through their website, sell their beer through their website. Melting Rose, India Pale Ale, 6% ABV. I like it enough to give it an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.